Hi everyone, welcome back to AI News. I Baodao. I am your host Ethan. The midterm election is right around the corner, and both Democrats and Republicans are making their final push to win this election. Today, we have the honor to interview the Republican governor candidate, Brian Daly. Brian Daly was chosen to be the State Assembly Republican leader in 2017 and ran for State Senate in 2018 in the special election. Now, in 2022, he is running for the governor against the worst enemy of all Californian, Gavin Newsom. We have him on the line right now. So please, Mr. Daly, tell us a little bit about yourself. Thanks for having me on, Ethan. I appreciate it. You should know that uh, my family has、uh, been in California for 92 years. I'm a farmer. We raise、uh, cereal grains for seed. We're certified organic. I served 16 years on the Lassen County Board of Supervisors before I went to the State Assembly in 2012, and then on to the Senate in 2019. And so I'm running for governor because I want the California dream to become a reality. I want my children to be able to stay in California and continue, hopefully,、uh, running our family farm. So that's the goal of this campaign: is to, again, make the California dream a reality. As you know, we have high prices, inflation. We have crime. We have our education system that's broken.、Uh, we lack water in California, and there's really no upward mobility for Californians to be able to thrive in the state. So that's、uh, why I'm running for governor. And so thanks for、uh, having me on. Very good. We need someone like you. Well, usually I will have a lot of questions about the candidate's personal life, their faith, their family. But you have minimum time with us, and as a governor, you are going to be the decision maker of the largest state and the most significant population and the most powerful influence, not only in the United States but to the whole world. So today, I will really focus on the policy that you have planned for California. But before we get into all the policy, you just had a debate with Gavin Newsom. How do you think you do? Well, I made the points I needed to make. Obviously, the debate was not just against Gavin Newsom, but in a lot of cases, the moderators as well. You know, Gavin Newsom talks about California that he's actually governed for four years, and he talks about spending money, a lot of money, a hundred and one billion dollars in surplus he spent last year. And for example, let's just talk about some of the policies that he's put forward: twenty billion dollars for homelessness. And that's seventy-five thousand dollars per homeless person in California, and we've actually increased homelessness by twenty-two thousand people. So, I think the message out of the debate was Gavin Newsom is going to talk about all these things he's doing, but at the end of the day, what are the results? Because Californians are feeling something different than what he's saying. For example, crime. We don't feel safe to go out at night because there's so much crime in California. Our education system. Is not teaching our children. Parents are pulling children out of the the classroom. Fifty thousand students didn't show up for the first day of school in LA Unified School District. So those are the examples I tried to point out during the debate that Gavin Newsom is a failure. I mean, California is in a drought. In 2018, we had more water in California. The Orville Dam broke、uh, because we had so much water. But we need to capture that water. So he doesn't. Fix anything. We are in a constant state of crisis, and that was the goal: is to expose him for what he really is. Now he talked about giving you back a couple of hundred dollars to certain people in California, and he's trying to buy your vote. So Californians know better than the fact that it was your money to start with, and he's handing you back your money trying to buy your vote. So that was the goal of the debate for him. It was talking about his, you know, presidential run. I pointed that out that he doesn't really focus on California. He's focused on. His run for president, and he's going to leave California in a way that is very difficult for Californians to be able to, you know, make the California dream a reality. And so my goal is to stay here, focus on California, obviously, and not、uh, make it a place where I have to leave. I can't tell you how many neighbors I know that have left California because they simply can't afford to live here. The middle class is being destroyed in California. I'm a middle class person. I have a small business. I operate. And I'm getting、uh, priced out of being able to stay in business in California. Yeah, I saw the debate, and it's like you're fighting with the host too at the same time. It's like when Donald Trump had his debate on CNN or something. Let's get into the question. First question: This is a Christian channel, and we really care about life. The whole country's conservative movement is really fixed on one thing: to save babies' life. We feel like our、uh, current governor eats baby for breakfast. With signing of AB two 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 three, what's your position on abortion? 
Well, first thing you should know is that I'm pro-life, number one, and I have a record voting for life. I'm a person of faith, by the way. I'm a believer. At the end of the day, you know, God loves family, and this is about family, and uh, we're destroying families by allowing these late-term abortions. Prop 1, it actually expands California law. The law in California is up to six months you can have abortion, and this bill actually allows you to go up into a minute before birth. That's extreme and I oppose that. And we're going to have an opportunity as Californians to get out our vote and uh, push back on these extreme positions that Governor Gavin Newsom is uh, pushing. So, look, the Dobbs decision at the federal level was the right decision, and it threw it back to the states. And now each state is going to have to decide uh, where we're going to be. Prop 1 will allow all Americans to come to California, and we will be paying for this extreme position to have an abortion up to the minute before birth, and I'm opposed to that. And I need all your listeners to get out and vote and push back against Prop 1 and vote for me as governor. Yeah, Prop 1 is actually against the California Constitution. Protect life and killing baby is not protecting any life. Well, let's get into our second question. California used to be the golden state for education, but now we rank number 46 in the bottom of the whole entire United States. Our public school is failing the next generation with critical race theory and sex education in our elementary school. I've interviewed some of the conservative school board members, and they say that California, there is nothing they can do to change it, even the school board. Everything is from the top up. So what's your plan to fix our school system? So as your governor, I want to um, make sure that we empower school boards and parents. Keyword there, parents, because... I want every California family to be able to choose a good school for their children. Obviously, Gavin Newsom is owned by the California Teachers Association. We were locked down for 18 months here in California. We were masking our children when we knew that the science was not good for masking children and the risk was very low. So California parents, uh, which is really amazing, have awoken to the fact that our school system is totally broken. It is from the top down. And Gavin Newsom's at the top of that. So I'm excited about this election because there are literally thousands of parents who are running for school boards throughout this state because they want to take back the education system. And I, I want to let you know that I've ran a bill two years in a row that would just simply post sex education online of the curriculum that is going to be taught in your school. First year, I got the bill out of the education committee and it died in the appropriations committee. The second year, I couldn't even get it out of the education committee. It is really amazing to me that they don't want parents to know what they're teaching your children because it will awaken those parents to where they will take their kids out of school. So we are being controlled by a teacher's union and a governor that doesn't have the best interests of your family and your children. So I will be promoting as governor a power for parents to have choice where their children go to school and hopefully the money will be able to follow those children to the school of their choice. That is my ultimate goal. That's Good. We need to fix our education system. Our education system is really, really bad right now. The next question is kind of personal to me. California has the strictest gun control in the country. Our Second Amendment right is basically ignored by the Democrat supermajority in our state. All those policies didn't lower crime, didn't lower shooting incidents. I looked through your voting record. I am very glad that out of the 46 anti-2A bill, you only voted yes for two of them, which is kind of support like a red flag law. Other than that, you are very pro 2A. What's your stand on gun control in California? And uh, what are your plans to help us to get our rights back to protect ourselves? I think the, the question you're really asking me is how can we keep our streets safe? Number one, we need to get guns out of felons' hands. We know there are tens of thousands of felons in California that have firearms that they're not supposed to have. So my goal is to, it's called the APPS program. It's armed and prohibitive persons who have a firearm that are legally not supposed to have that firearm. So I want to make sure that we get those firearms out of the hands of criminals, felons, by the way. And we need to fund our local city sheriffs or county sheriffs and our city police chiefs with the resources to get those guns out of violent criminals' hands. That's number one when it comes to gun violence. They're the ones committing the crime. I'm in a building right here in Sacramento that has a bullet hole in it 
where Smiley Martin, who was released, by the way, by a parole board that Gavin Newsom put in place, and he killed six people on the streets with illegal firearms. So to talk about the Second Amendment, I don't want to make law-abiding citizens have to jump through more hoops when the criminals are the ones that are having gun violence in California. Let's get the guns out of the hands of criminals and allow law-abiding citizens to exercise their Second Amendment right. Next question. Our crime and public safety is in very bad shape, not just in big cities like L.A. and San Francisco. Smash and grab are spreading to our suburbs. Businesses are leaving, closing down. Not just small family-owned businesses, even Starbucks, Target, Walmart, Walgreens are shutting down their stores due to riots and looting. Police are saying that they don't have enough funding or not enough manpower, but at the same time, they fired hundreds of our officers due to mask and vaccine mandate. What's your plan to solve our crime and public safety problem? Well, first off, I want to say to all of the law enforcement people, I uh, understand it's a difficult job and I'm uh, behind you. We need to empower you uh, to be able to do your job, number one. But number two, we should focus a lot on the fact that we have a catch and release system, basically. There is no punishment for crime. And so I want to make sure that criminals, uh, like I mentioned earlier, Smiley Martin is serving their sentence and that we don't just simply allow them to go in and not be be out on bail. There's no bail. Be out on bail free and uh, be out committing crimes this the very next day. So we have a catch and release system. We need to replace the DAs uh, that are very extreme, like we saw with Bodine in San Francisco, who got recalled. Uh, I'm for law enforcement. I want to make sure that we keep our streets safe. And at the same time, you know, Gavin Newsom let out 30,000 prisoners under the COVID restrictions to keep them from getting sick. And those criminals are out on our streets. He closed down prisons in California. It's not that we don't have room for them. We just need to fund them. And we need to put these extreme violent criminals back in prison where they belong and off our streets. They're victimizing uh, Californians. So that's my position on crime. We obviously um, know that the smash and grab situation, I want to talk about Proposition 47, which uh, Gavin Newsom supported. Uh, and it was, it was titled as the Safe Schools and Neighborhood Act. Uh, and then they also said this is about, you know, people who are in prison for uh, drug crimes when, yes, they were in there for maybe having four or five pounds of marijuana, you know, 20 years ago, and they had these long sentences. We should let those people out because now marijuana is obviously legal in California. But violent criminals have been let out under that a law. You can rape an unconscious woman under Proposition 47 and is not considered a violent crime. And I can't think of anything more violent than uh, raping a woman. It's taking their dignity away and their and their personal freedoms. And I would put those people in jail. We actually ran a bill last year that would make sex trafficking of a woman and rape of a woman a felony. And it was killed by Gavin Newsom and his uh, party in the first committee. So I will be tough on crime. I will put prisoners or put uh, violent criminals back in jail. And for these repeat offenders who are doing smash and grabs, uh, we need to make uh, those crimes as well, uh, felonies as well, because they're continuing to, uh, after the second time or third time, we need to make sure they're off our streets because they're driving up the cost of um, all of our goods by stealing. The second time, we're losing businesses. And we actually have uh, you know, food deserts and islands where we don't have uh, uh, retail stores in our communities. Yeah, uh, as previously mentioned, and, and you, you said it, Businesses and uh, people are leaving California. Our states have too much regulation, taxes too heavy, and too much unnecessary spending that does absolutely nothing. In other words, our economy is in, a, in the gutter. What's your plan to restore our economy? So we have uh, increasing inflation. It's, uh, it's, and it's, it's because of our energy cost. Uh, is very high in California. We pay two and a half dollars a gallon higher prices for a gallon of gas than they do in Nevada. Uh, we pay higher than they do in Hawaii. And they have no oil wells in Hawaii. So the best way to combat inflation is really twofold. Number one, drive down the cost of energy. I own a trucking company. In the last eight months, it's two hundred dollars a day to put diesel increased in diesel in a truck. Well, that's a thousand dollars a week. That's four thousand dollars a month. That every commodity that I move has to go up in price. So a gallon of milk, 
a dozen eggs is going to go up because the cost goes up. So we need to drive down the cost of gasoline in California. We have thousand oil wells waiting to be permitted uh, here in California. We have oil in California. We can produce it here. And by the way, be more environmentally friendly than importing it from Ecuador, where 24% of our oil comes from, and they're destroying the rainforest. So driving down uh, electricity, by the way, is 70% higher than it is across the nation here in California. It actually went up 20% last year. So we need to drive down the energy. We need a grid that's reliable. We need to build power plants in California. And we can do green power plants. Geothermal is an opportunity that we need to tap into uh, to get to make sure we have clean energy at an affordable rate. So that's the way you drive down inflation is by driving down the cost of energy. And, and then the second thing that drives down inflation is uh, the ability to make government be more transparent and more efficient. Government is it doesn't do anything well. As you well know, uh, you know we've, we were uh, ripped off by $32 billion from our EDD program uh, that Gavin Newsom failed to. And, it, and that all businesses in California have to pay that $32 billion back. Criminals in prison were getting checks when hardworking people couldn't get their checks under COVID because Gavin Newsom failed to make the employer, uh, which is the policy that we had in place before. I'm an employer. So when somebody gets laid off, you check the box and say, yes, they were laid off, and then they get their unemployment. Gavin Newsom removed that check off, and so anybody that put in a form got paid, even though they were not laid off or they weren't um, working, and so it was ripe for fraud. And that's the kind of policies we need to streamline our government so that we don't have those abuses, and then give the money back to the taxpayers and the businesses so they can actually spend it wisely in California. We are overtaxed and overregulated, as you mentioned earlier. How do you see your opponent, Gavin Newsom? Because I see him as like this evil vampire guy that just, you know, chewing on Californian. How do you see him? Well, Gavin Newsom has one priority, and that's Gavin Newsom. He wants to be president of the United States. It's true. He, that's his only priority. He will step on anybody. T look at San Francisco. He was the mayor there. He said he was going to end homelessness. And homelessness has gone wild in San Francisco. And it's gone wild in California. So... He doesn't care about California, he cares about being president. That's why he focuses only on his presidential race, which he says he's not running, which we all know is obvious he is. He's out campaigning across this, this nation and he's not focused on California. California is only a stepping stone uh, for him to get where he wants to go. I want Californians, and he's, he's following his dream, but I want the California dream to become a reality. I'm not leaving California. We've been here a long time. I love California. And I want to make sure that Californians are able to prosper and not leave California. It's amazing to me that he talks about come to California when most of the people have already left California to the states that he's running ads and billboards in, Texas, Florida, uh, Tennessee. Those are all places where Californians have left because they can't afford to live here. So Gavin Newsom is about Gavin Newsom. I think it's pretty obvious. And he will do whatever he needs to to, to, build, to live his dream while the California dream is, a, is actually turned into a nightmare. Yeah, a, a lot of businesses that left, uh, or, or my friend, I have at least 10 that I know that left California. They're conservative too. And they're saying that California is a lost cause. There is no way we can turn it around. And uh, Republicans don't vote in there. And the Republican Party is not doing anything in California. What's your stand on that? Do you think we have a chance to go back to the Golden State and then uh, to become the leader, basically the center of any industry in the uh, in the world, do you think we have a chance to go back uh, if you lead the, the state? Yeah, well, absolutely. That's why I'm running is exactly to do just that. Look, we've lost a lot of, uh, you know, business headquarters out of California. And these are not just small companies. These are worldwide companies like HP, Oracle, Tesla, Chevron. Uh, they're worldwide companies and the tax base that we just lost because they left is going to be huge and it's going to hurt Californians. But if we would have lowered the tax some, they would stay here and lower the regulations as well uh, and allow them to be able to have a workforce. The problem in California is that it's expensive to live here. So even if you're a construction worker or you're uh, somebody who's working by the hour for their wages or you're on a fixed income, you have to afford, be able to afford to live in California. They can move out of California, work construction in another state, and their money goes so much further. They could buy a home. They can live their dream and support their family. We just have to remove the crazy politicians that are out of touch with what's happening in Sacramento 
and put in in, in leaders who know uh, how to balance a budget and how to make uh, California prosper. And I will say this to the people that are leaving, and I have the same thing. I have friends that have left. I have a friend who actually sold his farm. They were generational farmers in California and bought a farm in Texas and moved his cattle to Texas to raise his cattle there. But I say to this to them that are leaving, as California goes, the nation goes. So wherever you're going, uh, if these policies continue to come out of California, they're going to come to where you are next. And so let's take back California and uh, show the rest of the nation that we can actually do it right here. We can have a good environment. We can have good education. We can have uh, safe streets and, and we can live the California dream, drive down the cost of living. It can all be done. We do not have to live in a constant state of crisis. You know, Gavin Newsom spends money, but gets no results. And that's the problem. So Californians need to get out to vote. If there's one thing that comes out of this whole interview is I hope that the listeners understand that they must vote. They must go get their neighbors to vote. They must get their children to vote. And they must do that, go get their ballot, help them fill it out and turn it in. If we do that, we will win back California and we can you know, afford to live in a, in a wonderful, awesome state and prosper. Yeah, great answer. Uh, last question. California has been called the most satanic state out of all 50 states and with the biggest influence. Like you said, with California, where California go, the rest of the country go. Hollywood. Uh, during the COVID lockdown, our current governor forced to shut down our churches and open up casinos and strip clubs, saying that it is essential. Our school library banned any Christian-related reading material in their library. In other words, our religious freedom, you said you were a uh, man of faith, we are under attack by our own government. You are a religious man. What's your plan to save our soul in the state? Well, I will tell you this. I am a person of faith, and people of faith in California don't vote. And that's really the travesty is that a lot of them don't vote. We need to get out that faith community to understand that it's your duty as a Christian to vote. And so I want to just encourage Christians that, look, you're, we're going to be held accountable for what we do or don't do. So I'm asking them to get out and vote. And I want to say this about California. California has, as far as faith goes, we had the Azusa Street Revival, more print uh, Bibles and, and, and promoting uh, faith across the world has came out of California. Uh, you know, God has not forgotten about California. He's awakening California as we speak and, and those people of faith. So I'm asking you to do your part. At the end of the day, it is on, it's, uh, it's on us. And if you read the scriptures, you know that by doing nothing is, is not going to give you a pass. We have to do our part. You must get out and vote because we're going to be held accountable for what we do or don't do. And that's why I'm running. I'm giving God an opportunity to show off, and I believe he will. Um, there's plenty of stories in the word where we know where uh, just one person stood up to what was wrong, and God uh, came alongside them and changed the trajectory of nations. And that can happen in this race right here if you get out to vote, get your neighbors to vote, and we will take back California, and we will make it a place where you have freedom to worship uh, whatever religion you are, uh, without the government being involved in it. Well, thank you so much for doing this interview with me. Is there anything that you want your voters to know? And uh, let us know. Please tell us how to help you with your campaign at this very last moment. So you can go to briandally.com. That's B-R-I-A-N-D-A-H-L-E.com. And I want you to do, I want you to vote. That's very critical. But I want you to share on your social media platforms so get out the vote, share with everybody, you know, email. Another thing you should know is that email is a great opportunity because it's not censored. Email everybody on your email chain to get out and vote. Go get those ballots, turn them in. And November 8th will be an awesome day for California because we are going to take back our state. Well, thank you again for making this video happen, uh, this interview happen. Again, this is, it's really an honor to have this interview. I am interviewing the future governor. So uh, please go out and tell people about Brian Daly and spread the word. He is running for governor. There is no district. If you live in California, you should know that you want to replace Gavin Newsom. He is really destroying our family, our school, our life, our church. 
So thank you again, Mr. Daly, for letting AI News to have this chance to talk to you. And please, people, don't forget to go vote on November 8th. Thank you so much for having me, Ethan. This has been a great interview.